This is section 2.6, which deals with limits at infinity or horizontal asymptotes. Our first content objective is to use growth rates to identify end behavior models of functions. And by the time we're done with this objective, you should be able to describe the method you would use to identify end behavior models of functions, and you should be able to explain how the end behavior models for an exponential function are going to differ from those of other functions. And before we can get into this objective, we need to be all on the same page when it comes to our notation. So the first new notation for today is that we are going to write that f is a function defined on an interval from a to infinity, and if this limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l is written, what that communicates to us is that the values of f of x, which are the y coordinates of the function, are going to get closer and closer to this l as x moves further and further to the right. By contrast, if we have f defined from negative infinity up to a, then we can write the limit of those y values as x approaches negative infinity as l whenever the y coordinates of f are getting closer and closer to l as x travels further and further to the left. So if we look at this illustration here, we have three different graphs, all of which have end behavior and limit statements that can be written for what's happening on the right side of the graph and what's happening on the left side of the graph. So if we look at this one, we can see that as x travels further and further to the right, the y coordinates on the picture are getting closer and closer to 3. So I could write the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is getting closer and closer to 3. Same thing on the left side, we can see that as x becomes more and more negative as we move further and further to the right, the y values are getting closer and closer to negative 3. So I can write the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to negative 3. Same thing here, we can see that as x gets bigger and bigger, I'm oscillating around this line y equals 1. So I could write the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is going to equal 1. By the same token, on the left side, we can see that that same behavior is happening, and we can write the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is also equal to 1. On this one here, we're interested in the behavior as x gets large and as x gets really, really small. In both of those, we can see that the y coordinates are getting closer and closer to 1 half. So I can write the limit as x approaches infinity of f is a half, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x also equals a half. Now hopefully at this point you're already starting to think about horizontal asymptotes because here we've got this horizontal asymptote at 3, we've got another horizontal asymptote at negative 3, we've got a horizontal asymptote at 1, even though we're crossing it an infinite number of times, those y values are getting closer and closer to the 1 on both sides. And same thing here, we've got a horizontal asymptote that appears to be occurring when y equals 1 half. So that's going to be a connection that comes into play later in this section. So kind of put that in the back of your mind and store it there until we come back. Next we have some vocabulary. In addition to the notation, we have something that is called an end behavior model. So for numerically large values of x, we can sometimes model the behavior of a complicated, by fu complicated function by using a simpler one that acts virtually the same way on the edges of the graph. So these simpler functions are called end behavior models, and finding them simplifies the process of computing limits. And we're going to want to compute limits. So before we can compute the limits, we've got to be able to find end behavior models. So we have some mathematical definitions that kind of support this end behavior model. We say that we have a right end behavior model if the limit as x approaches infinity of the original function divided by its model will be 1. Same thing for a left end behavior model. The limit of the ratio of f over g as x goes further and further to the left will equal 1 if g is a good left end behavior model. So how do we find these end behavior models? We're going to use a mnemonic device that is not very easy to say, but it's one that the book uses. So we're going to kind of fake it and pretend that it's easy and call it nnnfeple. 
to identify the terms with the largest rate of growth and or the dominant terms, and then we're going to ignore the remaining terms. So this n to the n fepl is what we're going to use. And if you look at the chart that's next, we can start to identify what those are representing, what those letters represent. So with this n, n fepl, we have n to the n, which is the fastest growing type of function that we're going to deal with all year long. And these are functions that look like variables raised to variables, like x to the x, or 2x raised, oops, 2x raised to the x, or say we could do an x plus 3 raised to the 2x. These are all going to be functions that go super, super fast, and they're going to outpace any other function that we possibly could come up with. Factorials are those functions that involve the exclamation point. So that would be like this, or perhaps this, or maybe something like this. Then we have exponentials, which might be 3 to the x, or pi to the 2x, or 1 third to the x. So each of these involve numbers that are bases and powers that have exponents. Here we have things with exclamation point or exclamation points so those will be easy to recognize these ones are different from exponentials because they have bases that are variables and exponents that are variables so that's how we differentiate between the end of the ends and the exponentials next we have polynomials well polynomials are ones that have bases that are variables and exponents that are numbers so it could be something like this or something like this or even some roots. Technically those aren't polynomials, but they're going to fit into the same sort of category in terms of growth. So polynomials have the variables in the base, exponentials have the numbers in the base, and n to the n's have variables in both the base and the exponent. So these will grow the fastest all the time then they're followed by factorials, then we have exponentials. Now if we read this it says exponentials grow fast on one side and slow on the other, and that bigger bases cause bigger growth. So here we have a 3 and a 3.1415 on and on and on, so this particular exponential is going to grow faster than this one. And if you remember that group project that we did where we were looking at bases of exponentials, we noticed that if that base was smaller than 1, this would actually shrink on one side and then it's going to get bigger on the other side. So it kind of flips the behavior of these other ones where the bases were big. That's going to come into play when we find the right and left end behavior models for exponentials because left and right, it's going to depend on which side is growing. Our next type is logarithms. So logarithms are going to grow really slow. They're slower than everything else that we've had so far. And in this case, the bigger bases cause slower growth. So examples of logs might be a log natural of x. We could have a 3 log base 5 of x plus 2. We could have pretty much anything that involves a log. So in this case, I have a log base e, which is a 2.7-ish. So this one is going to grow faster than a log base 5, because bigger bases cause slower growth. And then last, I've thrown these in. We usually don't even consider them, because they're constants. And constants don't grow at all. They're just flat. So those would be f of x equals any number at all. And those ones don't grow, so they're going to grow slower than the logs, which in turn grow slower than the polynomials, slower than the exponentials, slower than the factorials, slower than the end to the ends. So what does all this mean for us in terms of the end behavior models? Well, if we want an end behavior model, we want to find a function that looks just like this one if we get far enough out, far enough away, either in the positive direction or in the negative direction. So I'm going to illustrate this first one using a graph. If we look here at this picture, I have graphed e 
to the x plus x. And we can see that it um, looks one way on the left side of the graph and it looks another way on the right side of the graph. And I'm going to talk about the portion of the graph that grows the fastest on various sides. So if I look here at this hidden one, it says y equals x. I'm going to show that graph and notice that I'm just looking from 0 to the left. Can you see that the red graph pretty much got covered up and aligns perfectly with that blue graph? That means on the left hand side the graph of our original function as x plus e to the x behaves an awful lot like y equals x. Whereas on the right hand side if I compare the graph of the red one to the graph of just e to the x and I look at that one we can see that it's getting pretty darn close. They're behaving very similarly on the right hand side. So what does this mean for us in terms of n behavior models? If we go look here, the right side, right end behavior model is going to be this term. And the reason it will be this term is because on the right side, e to the x grows. So e to the x looks like this, and it heads up super, super fast on the right side. Whereas on the left side, it's not growing at all. So on the right side, this is going to overtake the polynomial of degree 1. So our right hand and behavior model will be g of x equals e to the x. However, on the left side, because the exponential becomes virtually 0 as we move further and further to the left, the dominant term is actually going to be the polynomial term, or the x. So on the left side, g to the x is going to be the one that dominates. So the thing we have to remember is that e to the x grows on the right side only. So it will dominate on the growing side. So exponentials grow fast on one side and slow on the other. And because they come before polynomials, they're going to outpace any polynomial when they're on the growing side. But on the left hand side, the polynomial will take over. So now let's look at this one. Here my right end model, I have a exponential. I have a polynomial, and I have a log. So in order to determine which side is going to dominate for this exponential, I have to know which side it grows on. Well, 2 is a number larger than 1, so that means as I raise it to powers that are positive, it's going to grow on the right side really fast. So on the right side, the fastest term will be this 2 to the x. Whereas when I move to the left, this is no longer growing. It's super flat. So now I'm comparing the polynomial to the log. If I look at polynomials, they come before logs. So this polynomial is going to dominate. And I'll have g of x equals negative 3x to the fifth. So again, notes to remember, this log term never comes into play. So logs grow slow. And remember that 2 to the x grows on the right. Last, we have an x cubed and a negative 3 to the negative x. Now, some people get a little confused by that notation. So I'm going to rewrite that. Let me pull this down here. I'm going to rewrite this as f of x equals x cubed minus a 1 over 3 to the x, which is really just a 1 third raised to the x power. So now this, because the base is a third, is actually going to grow slow on the right, and it's going to get bigger on the left. So that means the right end behavior model will now be the polynomial, as opposed to the exponential, and the left will be dominated by the exponential term. So on this one, the thing we need to remember is that bases smaller than 1 cause growth on the left. 
instead of on the right. So now you can do your notes web exam problems 1 through 3 and then describe the method you use to identify the end behavior models of functions. Put it in words and explain how that end behavior model is going to be different on exponential functions than with those of other functions.